Hi everybody, I'm Jack from Rambling Rack and Turn. I hope that you're doing well. I hope you're having a safe week. I wanted to continue the library tour by focusing on a shelf, you know, we organize by publisher at our house, um, by focusing on a shelf that includes one of my favorite publishers, the Heinemann African Writers Series, which was this incredible undertaking in the sort of second half of the 20th century where Heinemann was publishing contemporary novels and, and books, works of poetry, um, plays, even works of nonfiction, um, political writings from African writers from countries all across Africa. Numerous nations were represented. And they had uh, Chinua Achebe, the great Nigerian novelist and, and you know, writer and theorist, as the editor-in-chief. They had office, publishing offices in uh, a number of cities in Africa. So that there, there really was this sense that the, the team, uh, you know, led by Achebe, really had its finger on the pulse of, you know, African literature, African culture, and was pushing these out, books that needed a, a, uh, a wider global audience. So these are available. You can find them in used bookstores. It's a great, the great response to the question, where are the African classics? Well, you want to look for two things. You want to look for the books that have this orange bar on the top with the AWS African Writer Series and then the white spine with Heinemann on the bottom. Or the really old school ones have just the orange bar and white spine here. So if you're at a used bookstore, you see those, highly recommend. Just pull it, check it out. You've probably never heard of the writer. Uh, you may never, you know, you may have known nothing about the country that writer's from, but there's it's probably an excellent novel. So I want to go through the ones we have, and I'm hoping that this is a part one because slowly my wife and I have acquired more and more of these and really enjoyed what we found. So one of the true greats, of course, uh, was a, a writer who was key to the uh, inaugural issues from the series. That's Cyprian Nkwensi, who's a Nigerian writer. Um, People of the City will be a, a later book we'll see in here. Uh, this is Burning Grass. This is a book that deals with um, sort of a rural area of Nigeria. It's not set in Lagos. Um, it's set among the, gosh, the Fulani uh, cattlemen. And so it's sort of a, there's a, it's like a cattle drive. It almost feels like a Western at times, although it's, it, it's a very deep book. Despite being very short, it's a very deep book. And it, I believe this one even has some illustrations. Um, yeah, Fulani herdsman. And it's really quite good. Uh, so this is Burning Grass. And this is actually the second of the, um, publications from Heinemann. Great, great volume. Another would be A Ride on the Whirlwind uh, from Sifo Sipamla, and this is uh, from South Africa, and this is from South Africa at a time when apartheid was still in effect. So one of the great features of the Heinemann writers was that Achebe could get books that weren't always able to be published in the country of that writer's origin, and he could get them published globally uh, to try and bring attention to the writer, to, to what the writer was talking about. Uh, and so A Ride on the Whirlwind is set in um, 1976 as there was some real legitimate actual political turmoil going on. Um, and this is a really, it's, it's an extremely well-written book, but it's an extremely nuanced book that really gets into not just what is happening, but what are people thinking as this, you know, enormous shift in, in their lives is occurring. So again, this is a fantastic book. Uh, and just to give in, this is number 268. So there's close to 300 books that were published in the Heinemann African Writers Series. Uh, this is one I'm hoping to read in the next two months. Uh, this is The Sun That Hath Looked Upon Me. And it's from Calixtha uh, Beala, who is from Cameroon. And she's a Francophone writer from Cameroon. One of the features of the African Writers Series was that most of the books that were picked uh, for publication were either originally written in English or French. Um, and some of that deals with uh, the European nations that had, you know, had colonies across Africa. And as um, those countries found their independence and, and freedom and, and were able to break through uh, the, those colonial barriers, they still were, a lot of the writers were writing in English and French. Um, so uh, Biala is a Francophone writer. And this one is, this one's interesting because of not just the where in Cameroon it's set, but really the portrayal, the, the age of the protagonist, um, that it's, it's a book written about a, a female character from a female writer, I think it makes it seem very interesting. I haven't yet read it, but I'm really looking forward to getting to this one, hopefully, as I said, in the next month or two. A fantastic one, The Seven Solitudes of Lorsa Lopez. Uh, this is from Sunny Labu Tansi, who uh, was from Democratic Republic of the Congo. At the time this was published, it was Zaire. 
And that was, an, you know, and is an enormous nation. And this is one of the few novels published from that nation. Uh, it's a, it's a really, it's a book of social justice, but it's also a book of characters who are trying to, trying to recognize that justice is not just about not being oppressed by a colonial power, but not being oppressed by your neighbor as well, I guess, is probably the most succinct way to describe this book. Uh, and it's, it's a wonderful short novel. Uh, let's see, Second Class Citizen from uh, Bushi Emesheta. So this is Ni a Nigerian book. This one is fairly close to um, uh, Bushi uh, Emesheta's own autobiography. It's, uh, it's very much as her own experiences of being Nigerian, moving with her husband into uh, England, I believe. Yeah, and in sort of the 1960s, as Nigeria has sort of acquired its, its independence, um, but as part of the Commonwealth and uh, uh, she moves there and starts to realize all these different aspects about her own life, her own intelligence, her own agency. That's exactly what we get here. It's, it's very much um, autobiographical fiction, but it's autobiographical fiction that's an autobiography that's quite unique. It's, you know, I'm not a huge fan of auto fiction. I really have very, very, uh, I don't enjoy it. But this is an example of one that because the experience is so different from my own experience in you know, and so different from the experiences of anyone I really know in my family or my close friends. This one works on a lot of levels. It's, it's a very um, fluid book, very well written. The great, great Usman Sembene, like one of the giants of, of African literature, African culture. He directed a film, Mandabi. He directed a couple of films. An incredible, incredible um, artist and, and you know, um, an entertainer, writer, just all over the place. Uh, he's from Senegal. God's Bits of Woods is um, probably, along with uh, uh, Ride on the World, one of the uh, great sort of political novels coming out of Africa. This one dealing with a, uh, a strike in Senegal along the uh, Dakar Railway. And this, th this is based on a real life strike that occurred in the late 1940s after World War II. And uh, Simene really gets, again, into what's happening, but also what's happening in the minds of all the people as this is occurring. You know, this was sort of a, a lived experience to a certain extent for um, for this writer. So he has a real sense of, of what's happening and, and, and how, what, what ultimately were the ramifications, because he's writing it some, some years later, but he, he can talk to people who, who lived in this moment. And um, I would say this compares well with the works of like Germinal by Emil Zola, uh, or even GB84 by David Peace. So then two from possibly the single greatest African novels. And, and there are a number of contenders for that title. Uh, there are a number of books, probably like the greatest African novel of the 20th century or the second half of the 20th century. There's plenty of great contenders, but one who I wouldn't, you know, I, I was a little bit surprised almost that he didn't get the Nobel Prize uh, last year when it was sort of clear they were going to try and steer away from Europe, <laughs> which has been well represented. Uh, and that would be the great uh, Noguji, sometimes known as James Noguji, sometimes as uh, Noguji Wathongo. Um, he's a great Kenyan novelist. So we have uh, The River Between. And this one is, um, many of his books really focus on uh, uh, religious symbolism, religious allegory. So he's a Kenyan writer representing Eastern Africa, which is, again, a little less common among uh, within the Heinemann African Writers Series, a lot of the writers come from sort of the uh, the western half of Africa. But The River Between is, um, it, you know, exploring this intersection of as, as there are missionary communities in Kenya, as there are, um, there, there's this intersection of sort of native beliefs, uh, indigenous beliefs, and those arriving from missionaries or those arriving from colonizers. How, how does all of that uh, how does that experience change the community? Not just a colonial conflict, but but on a much um, deeper, more personal level. Uh, and so uh, this is a great one. Devil on the Cross is amazing. This is one of his top three, in my opinion. Um, Pells of Blood might be number one. Weep Not Child is right up there. And those deal more specifically with the Mama um, uprising against uh, the British colony of Kenya that was horribly suppressed. But this one is, 
is really incredible. People talk about magical realism, and I think Brian at Bookish did a great video exploring how that term is sort of patronizing. Uh, but that sense of that sense of you know being be, people who believe in the supernatural and what that means, how that how that changes your outlook on life and your experiences and how you, you relate to others, but how you relate experiences to yourself and, and, and their meaning, that is just suffused throughout uh, Noguchi's writing. So um, Devil on the Cross is, a, it, I, I would say if you're going to check out one writer from the After Nighter series, he would be the one I would say start with. Uh, one that I haven't read, but I'm hoping to get to would be The Last Harmation of Alucine uh, Dunbar. And this is, uh, this is from a writer from Sierra Leone. Uh, and his name is Sil Cheney Coker. This was a more recent acqu acquisition, but I'm really excited to read this one. This one sounds like something Noguchi could have written. Uh, it, it, the, the way it's described, um, I'll just read the back. Uh, Suleiman the Nubian has transcended the divide between life and death, between the past, present, and future. In him are distilled the ancient arts of magic and prophecy. He speaks to a young man who is still of this world, destined himself to break through barriers with his passion and his poetry. Um, all is foreseen in the looking glass of Suleiman the Nubian, otherwise Alusine Dunbar, the black pioneers seeking freedom after the American Revolution, their landfall on Malagueta, somewhere on the West African coast, and a place of memory and enchantment, promise and revenge. With the people's dedication and ingenuity, the settlement prospers. Then the Harmatan blows its dry breath of ill omen, presaging an age of bitter struggle and colonial oppression that echoes down to the brutal political realities of today. Uh, it's uh, Last Harmatan of Alusine Dunbar. Um, this one sounds a little bit like uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, if I'm honest, and I'm really looking forward to getting to it. So a lot, I mentioned most of these writers were originally writing in English or writing in French. And uh, I think in terms of being able to, to publish works, it, that was a little bit easier for Achebe and, and the company. But they did publish writers from other languages, including uh, Alifa Rifat, who was an Egyptian short story writer, and she uh, could only uh, read or write Arabic. And so her influences are very different from what we think of across 20th century fiction. And Distant View of a Minaret is absolute dynamite. This is, again, of the many, many collections of short stories read across the 20th century. This is one of my favorites, frankly, and I would highly, highly recommend it. Now, the Heinemann African Writers series also was joined later on by the Caribbean Writers series. Um, and so we have uh, works by Earl Lovelace. <laughs> Uh, this one is The Wine of Astonishment, and uh, Lovelace was writing um, from Trinidad, and uh, one of his stories was um, anthologized in Trinidad Noir, uh, the classics. So some folks are, are aware of him, but uh, he's, he was a great writer. And then another one I have is A Season in Rihata by Maurice Conde. I just found this at a charity sale, so I'm looking forward to uh, diving into this one as well. This is interesting because it really gets at the intersection of... Um, uh, Afro-Caribbeans and Africans. Uh, the writer herself, uh, Conde, had, um, was born in the Caribbean but grew, spent a huge amount of time in Africa uh, in various African countries. So this is like an, this seems like a really interesting book I'm looking forward to. Now, Heinemann was sort of the giant of publishing like contemporary literature from Africa. And one of the things that's noticeable is that uh, it's very different from what Penguin Classics is doing with their African, modern African classics line, where they're sort of just cherry picking volumes from the Heinemann African writers. Uh, Noguchi has at least two, if not three books that have been pulled, um, a couple of others that are now being republished by Penguin Classics, which is great. I want them out there. Um, but there's not that sense of like people on the ground, you know, in, in the cafes, uh, on the campuses trying to find great current African writers um, the way that, that Heinemann was doing. But Heinemann, there was a contemporary series, the Longman African Writers, and there was a Longman Caribbean Writers, uh, and really their crown jewel of publication is, of course, Our Sister Kill Killjoy by uh, Emma Atta Edu. Fantastic novel, a short novel, but really packs a punch. An amazing, amazing work. Um, and uh, Edu is from Ghana originally, so... I would highly recommend this. This is from the Longman African Writers series. 
So NYRB Classics has a handful of uh, books published by African novelists. One of those would be Cyprian Aquincy's People of the City. This is a fantastic book. It was uh, set in the 1950s in an unnamed city that's clearly Lagos. And it moves. It moves. It feels modern in terms of its pacing, in terms of uh, the characterizations that occur. It feels like something that, that would have felt uh, timely and fast-paced even in the 1920s, sort of the jazz age. So this is a great book. I'll link my video talking about it in the description box below. The Great The Radiance of the King from Kamara Lay, uh, from, uh, who's from Guinea and um, later on moved to France. This is an incredible book. Uh, it evokes aspects from Kafka. It, it has that sense of the marvelous real. And this is one of the finest books I've ever read. And then finally, um, Season of Migration to the North by Teb Sili, uh, who is from the, Sud the Sudan, I believe. Let me check that. Yes. Uh, and so this is interesting, again, because it's uh, not right there on that western coast of Africa. And it's having a very different experience. The the way that there's a character returning to the Sudan, a nation that's not often, you know, frequently written about or or uh, has works of literature being published from it, you know, in the English speaking world. And so uh, this is kind of a real gem and one that I'm hoping to get to this year. So let me know if you've read these. Let me know if you own any of the Heinemann African Writer series because there are so many. And I know that what I found are just this like scratch of the surface and yet I've enjoyed so many. And so I'll continue to, of course, to look for these. Uh, but let me know if you've read any of these or if you have any of the long African or Caribbean Writer series as well. And uh, I hope everybody's having a great week. Thanks.